Hi, Doc. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay. Hi, everyone watching us today. So we're, uh, we're having another edition of our Asian Eye Facebook Live session. So I think one of the things that we've noticed as the uh, quarantine has gone on is that basically Asian Eye has said that although our clinics are closed, we do open up our doors for those that have urgent and emergency cases. So what we're here to discuss is what exactly does that mean? And what are the signs and symptoms that you need to watch out for? As well as uh, what do you do if you start experiencing any of these symptoms? And now we have Dr. Amadeo Veloso Jr. here today to answer our questions. And to give us a little bit of a background about Dr. Veloso, he is a retina and vitreous diseases specialist. He's also a cataract and comprehensive ophthalmologist. So he finished his medical degree and medical internship at the University of the Philippines, uh, PGH. And then he underwent residency training in ophthalmology at St. Luke's Medical Center, where he also became the chief president. Afterwards, he pursued his clinical fellowship training in retina and vitreous diseases at Scapens Eye Research Institute, Massachusetts Eye and Ear, uh, at Harvard Medical School in Boston, the United States. And Dr. Veloso, in case you didn't know and you happen to be his patient, he also is an active researcher and he's authored several pioneering research publications in both local and international journals. He's also a key resource speaker at a lot of international conventions and conferences. And he's also a founding member of the Vitreo Retina Society of the Philippines, as well as the former president and medical director of the Ophthalmolog Ophthalmological Foundation of the Philippines, as well as the former chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology at the Gat Andres Bonifacio Medical Center in the city of Manila. At present, he is serving as the director of Asian Eye Institute's Retina and Vitreous Disease Service, as well as the Institute's Retina Fellowship Training Program. So Doc doesn't just um, have clinical days. He doesn't just treat patients. He's also training the next generation of doctors who are interested in having a retina practice. So Doc, good afternoon. And good it's afternoon. so good to see you. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. And uh, for those watching us today, this is something new for Doc. He's never done uh, a Facebook Live session. So it's, uh, it's very interesting. It's an interesting experience because instead of having to come to the clinic to ask the doctor questions, you can actually watch him on Facebook Live and bring up some of the things that maybe you've forgotten to ask or haven't had the opportunity to ask him. So first things first, Doc. Uh, a lot of times we say urgent and emergency eye concerns. But what does it mean? And isn't it the same thing? If something's urgent, it's also an emergency case. Well, if we were to divide uh, urgent cases into three uh, different uh, uh, items, depending on the severity, there is what we call the immediate uh, mm -hmm. emergency cases, mm -hmm. followed by uh, very urgent and the urgent. Okay. So for so the immediate, uh, immediate, urge, immediate case. Yes, there are what we call uh, true emergencies in ophthalmology. And there are two conditions that can bring about, uh, that, that would uh, need immediate eye care and consultation. These are uh, central retinal artery occlusion. Uh, this is a condition where the blood supply to the retina is uh, abruptly interrupted. Uh, this is probably due to hypertension or diabetes or some other systemic problem. And the other immediate uh, condition, the other condition that needs immediate attention would be uh, chemical injuries from acid or alkali getting into the eyes and, and into the cornea. Okay. So those would be the, the two main cases where you would have to really come in as soon as they experience it. And they, the way that they sound, though, they sound like very painful and immediate cases. Talaga. Like you can tell that the patient would be in a lot of pain or discomfort. Yes, well, for, for the retinal artery occlusion, usually patients don't feel any pain, but they uh, suddenly lose their vision. You know, as in from 20-20 from vision, it can go down to, to light perception only. Okay. There's no eye redness, there's no eye pain, but there's a very drastic change in the vision. While for a chemical injury, uh, 
because of the traumatic nature of the condition, then uh, patients would feel a lot of pain, high redness, discomfort, and also uh, loss of vision. Okay. So, Doc, but in cases like this, if they don't get checked, then the fear there is that they could lose their vision permanently. Yes, these are conditions that uh, need immediate attention. So if if uh, these are the conditions that a patient would experience, uh, they should run immediately to the emergency room mm -hmm. or to call their eye doctors right away. Okay, and that's so, Doc, that's the true emergency. And then the second that's 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 And then there are what we call the very urgent. Uh, these are uh, emergencies that need uh, to be seen within hours, no? and these are uh, if you have a perforated eyeball or a ruptured globe. Uh, sometimes patients may experience severe pain because of a glaucoma, mm -hmm. and if there is uh, like bulging of the eye or proptosis, this is a uh, uh, these are the very urgent cases that need to be seen within within a few hours, no? Okay. So in those cases, Doc, um, like for example, you were saying the perforation. So that means any situation where let's say you have kids around and they suddenly poke, in, it becomes like, it sounds like an accident, accidental um, kind of situation. And then you say, sabi, sir, parang, uh, there seems to be like swelling or a lot of uh, like an injury the way that it sounds. Yung mga ganun, Doc, would always fall under a very urgent concern. Yes, yeah, especially in children. Sometimes, you know, they're just playing and uh, somebody pokes the eye with a pencil or with a barbecue yeah. stick. You know, that's that's very common. Okay. Uh, so I guess in order for people watching us, they have to remind their kids not to run around with anything that's sharp and not to play with anything that's sharp, especially with like their siblings or their, um, their neighbor, maybe. Yeah. And, and then, of course, you have the... the, the Type of injury to the eye that uh, does not lead to uh, that's not caused by a perforation, but because of a blunt trauma, like mm -hmm. if somebody uh, gets hit okay. with, a, with, with a baseball bat or even with a fist, then you can rupture the eye globe, the okay. the, the globe of the eye uh, mm -hmm. in, in those instances. Mm -hmm. So again, that's a warning when it when it na kapag yung mga bata, kasi especially if they're in the house. Yung nanggigigal na sila to go out. So, gugusto mm -hmm. nila na, sige, maybe a little rough play. Or let's say, nataon na meron silang swimming pool. Like an inflatable mm -hmm. sa house. Baka they're kind of thrashing around. Yung medyo magulo. Those yeah. are the situations where mas likely na ma-injure like whoever they're playing with. Mm -hmm. Sa mga bata, yung nakakanto, di ba? They, they play and then they hit the corner of the table or of a chair. That's very uh, common sa mga bata. Okay, so yon. Uh, siguro for any parent, may siya katapat nga naman yung ganong situation, Doc. Especially if yung anak nyo is crying. So yung iisipin mo una, wait, pacheck ko na to. <laughs> diba? Yeah. Kasi you don't wanna risk it, especially sa time na to. Na as much as possible, ayaw mong lumabas. But for a traumatic injury like that, hindi mo siya i-risk. Kasi it's better na pakita mo na sa doctor agad kaysa hintayin mo. Yes. Kailangan uh, kaagad-agad. Lalo na sa bata, minsan it's really hard to uh, elicit yung symptoms sa kanila. No? So, and then, that, not to bring them in right away. Uh, for any case like that, the first thing that would be, like you were saying, either dalin mo na sa emergency room or tumawag ka na sa eye doctor. So in the case of Asian eye, what happens? They It's much easier kapag tumawag sila para at least they can speak with the doctor directly and then the doctor will specify na sige punta ka na today or punta ka uh, within the next next hour or so para ma-check na agad yes uh you know you can just call our numbers uh i think they'll flash it on the screen no? mm -hmm. uh, you can call the numbers and we have doctors on standby lalo na ngayon during the uh, lockdown uh we accept uh, telemedicine for mm -hmm. special consultations so I encourage you to use the facilities that the Asian Eye Institute has. Mm -hmm. And siguro, yung mahal na rin for uh, the people watching us today na malaman nila, sa siyempre yung consultation na to, this telemedicine uh, service during quarantine, free siya. 
So, hindi sila kailangan mag-worry na at least for this time being as part of our own efforts to help keep people stay at home para they stay safe. Uh, pwedeng tumawag muna. Kasi minsan, kapag gano'n, hindi naman siya very urgent concern, pwede silang uh, masabihan muna kung ano yung first aid from the doctor. It give it bites them time para hindi sila magpanik. Siguro yung nakakatakot for any parent or any caregiver kasi yung hindi nila mm-hmm. alam yung gagawin. So at least, alam nila na pwede silang tumawag. Uh, merong smart number, there's a globe number. Pwede rin sila mag-email. Tapos, uh, depending doon sa case, sasabihin naman ng doctor kung kailan ka pwedeng pumunta if it's within that day or the next day. And at the same time, para sa mga tao na kailangan na dumaan ng checkpoint, lalo na let's see, lalo na kung galing sila outside Metro Manila, we nag issue naman tayo ng medical certificate, a certification from the doctor saying kung bakit niya kailangan mag-travel. At the same time, merong appointment slip. So, it's very valid. Like, kung pumunta ka sa checkpoint, ipapresent mo yung items na yun, they'll see that it's coming from Asian Eye, then they'll be able to pass through. And siguro for anyone that's wondering, we've done this a couple of times during the ECQ. And in general, yung mga pasyente naman, hindi nagkaka-problema sa pagdaan ng checkpoint. Ito, Doc, siguro, um, one of the most common eye concerns that we're asked about often is yung eye redness. So these days, of course, you're, you're probably going to be a computer at halos buong araw eh. Lala na para sa mga taong naka-work from home. So may mga araw na namumula yung mata. Is this something I should worry about? Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Audrey. Uh, before getting to the symptoms, may isa pa yung urgent. No? So merong uh, immediate, may very urgent within hours. And then meron naman yung uh, emergency cases that the patient has to be seen within the day or uh, within 24 to 48 okay. hours. Ito yung mga retinal detachment, mm. uh, merong uh, uh, ulcer sa mata or infection sa cornea. Kung nagalusan yung cornea, ang tawag namin doon, abrasion, o pag uh, nagkakaroon ng infection yung eyelids, okay. no? na pumupunta sa likod ng mata, yung cellulitis, that is another condition na kailangan makita. At saka yung uh, pag minsan nagpupukpok tayo sa bahay tapos may tumasik na bakal no? sa, o nagka-grind tayo, may pumasok na bakal sa loob ng mata, y- yung mga conditions that have to be seen okay. within 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so just to, to clarify, Doc, so the three levels are yung, yung first, yung immediate, kasi chemical burn siya or something very traumatic. The second is very urgent gives you a few hours to do it. And then your third level is within 24 to 48 hours. Correct, yes. Okay, so ganon. So may levels pala yan kapag sinabing urgent or emergency, hindi hindi sila pantay-pantay. Merong mas emergency than others. So for me, Doc, interesting yung ganon kasi sinabi niyo yung retinal detachment. Kapag ganon, Doc, yun yung parang may cortina, di ba? Na sa vision mo, noong una malinaw, tapos parang may nag-cover bigla. Is that it? Yes, yung retinal detachment, yung... Uh yung pinaka-lining ng mata, sa loob ng mata, na naghihiwalay, no? tumutuklap. So, para siya talagang kurtina na tumatakip sa ating paningin. Uh, karamihan, yun ang na, nararamdaman ng pasyente. Yun ang symptoms ng pasyente. Mm-hmm. And then, Doc, yung sinabi niyo cellulitis. Kasi para it sounds very unusual na case. So, what happens with that? Uh, yung cellulitis, nagkakaroon ng uh, infection. Uh, minsan nag-uumpisa sa harap mm-hmm. ng mata and then it pumupunta yung sa likod. No? So yung buong uh, area around the eye nagiging inflamed. So delikado rin yun. Okay. Uh, pwede magdulot ng pagkabulag din yun. Masakit okay. yun. No? Uh, magamaga. But yung mga ganun, very obvious pag nakita ng isang pasyente. Okay. And then, Doc, when you say na parang yung infection nagsimula siya sa harap ng mata, that means, kunyari, nataon that you were working on something dun ka sa garden mo or nag, uh, nag-aayos ka ng mga gamit sa bahay, nataon na you scratch your eye, pwede bang dun manggaling yung mga condition na gano'n? Oh, kahit anong sugat sa paligid ng mata, pwede mag-cause ng uh, yung tinatawag na orbital cellular. It's kahit kagat ng lamok, no? O kagat ng ipin. Na- scratch. Very common or, or ma- 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 makamot, no? Uh, yung infection pwede pumunta sa likod, ang tawag doon, orbital cellulitis, at yun ay medyo serious at kailangan magbigyan ka agad ng uh, medical attention. Okay. And then yung sinabi niyo naman, Doc, na parang pwede magalusan yung cornea, dito ba pumapasok doon yung sinasabi na during quarantine, 
kung pwede naman, huwag ka munang gumamit rin ng contact lenses. Kasi iniiwasan natin yung hawakan yung mukha mo, yung eyes, yung nose, at saka yung mouth. So kapag naka-contact lenses ka kasi, mas mataas yung chance na kasi hahawakan mo yung mata mo eh para makuha, umalagay, or matanggal yung contact lens. Yes, yan ang isa sa pinaka-common, no? Uh, minsan, dahil sa, ano na, during the quarantine period, walang tulugan, ano? Puyatan. Ano na mga bata, and then natutulog sila, suot-suot yung contact lens. Pagkatapos sa umaga, pag pinilit nilang tanggalin, doon nagkakaroon ng sugat. So, yun ang isang pwedeng maging sanhi ng uh, corneal abrasion. Um. Pwede, pwede rin naman na matamaan ng, ng uh, papel. That's very common also. O ng daliri, pwede rin maging sanhi ng abrasion. Okay. So kung gano'n siguro, kailangan natin talagang um, i-remind yung mga tao, hanggat maaari, huwag mong kamutin yung area surrounding your eye, yung eye mismo, or yung area surrounding your eye, kasi very sensitive yung balat natin doon. Yes. And at the same time, dahil nga, siguro, kunyari, makating-makate, or na-irritate siya bigla, mas likely kang maka-injure ng sarili na hindi mo na-realize. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. And, sorry, uh, kasi we were talking nga about yung sa eye redness. So, una-una, syempre, if you scratch your eye na nangangati siya, mamumula yung mata mo. Or let's say, nagpuyat ka, for sure mamumula yung mata mo. Or if you're uh, working at home, and let's say, mga four or five hours ka na on uh, looking at your screen, that's also redness. So, and how do I know kung yung redness ko is just because siguro napagod yung mata ko versus redness na mukhang seryoso concern na to? Uh, um, red eye redness kasi pwedeng napaka uh, benign na condition, pwede naman na very serious. So usually kapag may eye redness ang isang pasyente, kailangan nating tingnan kung may iba pa bang symptoms na kasama ng eye redness tulad ng uh, paglabo ng paningin no? or pagmumuta or uh, sumasakit yung mata or nagkakaroon ng distorted vision or uh, nakakakita ng uh, parang mga uh, ilaw o liwanan. No? So, yan ang mga iba pang symptoms na kailangan uh, tingnan kung merong eye redness. Okay. Tama ka, pusing na puyat lang, kaya namumula yung mata. No? Yeah. So, baka kailangan lang pala tulog lang, mas mahabang tulog lang pala ang solusyon doon. Oo. Oh, and the most common talaga is dryness. Eh. Pag nakakaroon ng dry eyes, nag nagiging makula yung mata. Okay. And then, Dok, kasi sinasabi nila na may mga pasyente na nagkakaroon ng subconjunctival hemorrhage. Ano to, Dok? Yung subconjunctival hemorrhage, meron lang uh, maliit na blood vessel sa conjunctiva o sa ibabaw ng mata na nag-rupture. Ito ay pwede mangyari. Halimbawa, nakamot yung mata at pwede sa yung ugat, kaya nag-rupture. Pwede rin ito sa mga pasyente yung umiinom ng mga blood thinners, katulad ng aspirin. No? Uh, kaya patuloy na dumudugo yung uh, yung conjunctiva posible rin na ito ay dahil sa hypertension or diabetes mm. uh, so pero most of the time benign naman ng sanhin ng subconjunctival hemorrhage so is that why doc na usually yung mga tao mataas ang presyon likely rin na minsan kapag tinignan mo sila medyo mapula-pula yung mata Yes, generally, mas congested yung mata kapag mataas ang blood pressure. Pero pag halimbawa, bilang tumaas yung blood pressure, nagra-rupture yung blood vessel at yun ang nagiging sanhin ng subconjunctival hemorrhage. How about, Dok, yung sinabi niyo doon sa mga tao may diabetes na pwedeng nagkaka-hemorrhage din, is that just because mataas yung sugar nila, so uh, apektado yung vessels ng mata? Sa mga diabetics kasi, ang talagang problem yung blood vessel mismo. Hindi lang sa mata, kung hindi sa ibang parte ng katawan. So, nag nagiging mahina yung walls ng blood vessels, no? Nag-leak. So, konting uh, trauma lang, minsan sa ganong mga, sa mga pasyente may diabetes, madaling nagra-rupture yung blood vessel. Mahina yung walls, eh. Okay. So, siguro yun yung kailangan natin ipaalala rin, lalo na sa lahat ng mga taong diabetic na nasa bahay din lang, mataas kasi yung temptation na siguro to pass the time yung madalas ka kumain kasi nagahanap ka ng thing to do. And siguro it's a, it's a good time na i-remind natin yung mga tao na mahalaga pa rin na balance yung diet, yung 
maganda yung halo ng may kulay, may karne, tas may mga fruits and vegetables. Tapos yung dapat, check pa rin nila yung blood sugar. Uh, hindi porket naka-work from home tayo, naka-quarantine, na, na, hindi naman mag-work from home yung diabetes. May meron pa rin siya. Uh, in, in that case, ito pa daw, another thing that I hear a lot about, paano naman kung meron ako napapansin na floaters? Normal pa yun? Or dapat bang medyo kapahan na ako kapag naka-experience na ako nun? Yung floaters kasi pwedeng uh, benign yun, ang ibig sabihin, ito po ay dahil sa aging lang. No? Nagkakaedad yung pasyente. So yung vitreous o yung tubig sa loob ng mata ay nag-age, nagiging, nagiging, nagiging luma. So nagkakaroon ng floaters. Pero kung yung mga ganitong kondisyon ay normal at hindi dapat bigyan masyado ng pansin. Pero ang floaters din ay maaaring simptomas ng mas serious na problema tulad ng nabanggit ko kanina, yung retinal detachment. Kasi nagkakaroon ng butas o punit yung retina. Uh, pwede rin yan makita sa mga kondisyon na may maga, yung tinatawag namin uveitis or inflammation, pwede rin magkaroon ng floaters. So iba-iba uh, pala talaga yung case. So that's why kapag may floaters, huwag mag-panic agad. Pero kapag yung floaters, dok, siguro dumami bigla, ganun. Doon ako siguro mag kailangan maging concern. Oh, kung yung floaters ay bago, bagong symptom at uh, at uh, o dumadami yung floaters, mas maganda makita sila kagad. Pero kung matagal na yung floaters at wala naman pagbabago, minsan, kabisado mo na yung itsura, yung bugis ng floater, uh, huwag mo napansin yung masyado. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, Doc, kasi sinasabi nyo, di ba, na usually kapag yung floaters, posible siyang symptomas ng mas seryosong concern. Uh, marami bang kaso kung saan ang pasyente may na-experience siyang floaters pero wala siyang ibang na-feel na mga symptoms of let's say something like retinal detachment or any other retina problem? Yes, posibleng dahil lang sa aging ng vitreous kaya nagkakaroon ng floaters. Actually, ang floaters is very common uh, sa mga senior citizens. no? Uh, so, kailangan lang ma-check pero hindi naman siya ganun ka-urgent unless, again, may iba pa siyang kasamang symptoms katulad ng paglabo ng vision. Kung halimbawa may floaters, tapos lumalabo yung vision. Pagkatapos uh, meron yung tinatawag na flashes of light no? or photopsia. Ito ay isa pang symptom na pagkasabay ng floaters, medyo kailangan makita sila kagad. Okay. Doc, kapag sinasabi mo kasi yung flashes of light, Para ba siyang nagtitwinkle na light in your vision? Or is it more like parang may nag-picture sa akin na may flash? Ganon yung experience ng pasyente. Uh, maraming presentation ang flashes of light. Eh. Minsan parang, uh, di ba minsan may kumukuha ng picture sa likod mo, tapos may ilaw na nagre-reflect, tapos parang napapansin mo na ay may kumukuha pala ng detrato sa likod ko. Sometimes doon na ang symptoms. Minsan para siya talagang bituin na na uh, mga But for one or two seconds, oo, nakikita mo and it can come from different parts of the of the field of vision. Minsan naman, uh, parang showers of light, no? Parang umuulan pero puro ilaw. So, iba-iba na ang presentation ng uh, photopsia or light flashes. Okay, and then how about doc, yung mga patients na, siya sabi nyo kasi kanina, let's say, nagkaroon ng Uh, kate, near the mat, near yung mata mo, syempre yung tendency mo is kakamutin mo yun. And then for some people, let's say allergic sila to dust or for whatever case, then may the scratch yung eyelid, tas magiging swollen siya or painful. Is, would that count as an emergency? Uh, yung, uh, I think ang ibig mo sabihin yung parang itchiness sa at mata, no? Well, hmm. minsan kasi yung itchiness pwede maging symptom ng nag-uumpisa ng infection. So okay. kung gan, medyo kailangan ma makita at magamot kagad. Pero minsan dahil lang sa dry eyes, o minsan dahil lang sa allergy, so okay. hindi masyadong uh, delikado yung mga ganung condition. Ang suggestion ko, pwede nilang lagyan ng ice compress, no? For about 15 minutes. Usually that will relieve the itchiness, eh. no? Uh, okay. iwasan natin kamutin yung ating mga mata. Ngayon, kung mag-persist yung symptom na yun, maganda magpa 
check agad sa doktor, sa eye doctor. Okay. And, and then so, Doc, basta itchiness yung concern, then it's okay to do yung cold compress. Paano kung napapansin mo may pamamagana talaga? Uh, pag namamagana talaga, kailangan ma-check talaga ng eye doctor. No? Minsan kasi, uh, halimbawa, yung napakasimple yung kuliti, no? yeah. minsan nag-umpisa yun, parang may makatilang sa talukap, eh, sa eyelid. No? Tapos parang gusto mong kamutin, pero... Uh, nandoon mismo sa kung saan lumalabas yung pilit mata. No? Mm -hmm. Yan. Tapos, uh, uh, pagkalipas ng isa, dalawang araw, namamagana, as you can see in the picture dito sa sa eyelids. Yan, yan example yan ng kuliti. No? No? Minsan, nag-upisa yan na parang makati. Okay. So, so ganun na lang, depende na lang siguro sa na-experience nila. Kapag itchiness, Siguro first things first, siguro they need to wash their face. Kasi posible namang may irrit irritant lang doon sa bahay or nataon na nung humangin sa area nila, there was something na, na nakakakos ng irritation kaya naging makati yung mata. So siguro iwasan na kamutin. And at the same time, kung hindi mo ma-help or ikaw yung tao na may tendency talagang humawak sa muka, mahalaga na, na hinuhugasan nila madalas ng masinsinan talaga yung mga daliri para kung sakaling mahawakan mo man yung mata mo, most likely ka magkaroon ng infection. Yes. Uh, the general rule is wag natin kamutin yung mata natin kasi baka mamaya magka magkaroon pa ng abrasion o lalong kumalat pa yung infection. So, lagyan lang natin ng ice kagat. Yun ang mm -hmm. ang uh, uh, first aid kapag makati yung mata. Doc, kung kung ito yung kasi, paglagay ng cold compress. Siguro kasi ito yung uh, baka magka-confusioner kasi yung mga tao eh. Kapag sinabi mo cold compress, so kukuha sila ng ice, i-wrap nila in cloth, tapos yun yung, yun yung ipatong sa mata? Uh, ang pinakamadali yung durog na yellow, crush okay. up, ilagay mo sa plastic bag, mm -hmm. and pull, pull the plastic bag over your eye. Yun, okay. yun, yun ang pinaka uh, magandang paraan. Katulad ng mga nakikita nyo minsan, mga ice gel, di ba? Plastic uh -huh. naman siya, tapos may gel sa loob. Kung masyadong sensitive yung mata, masyadong nalalamigan, pwede yung ibalot sa uh, manipis na tuwalya and put over the eye. Ah, okay. So in that case, kasi baka naman yung mga tao, kukuha lang talaga sila ng ice tapos they'll put it on top of the eye. But, kasi matutunaw yung ice at saka minsan, pag masyadong malaki yung yellow, it might apply more pressure sa mata, mas makasama. So mas maganda yung durog na yellow. Okay, so you want important information yon. So at least now, yung manunood sa atin, alam nila kung paano mag apply ng tama ng cold compress. And then ito daw, another thing. Sinasabi nila na minsan, madalas rin yung foreign body in the eye. Uh, kapag naramdaman mo ba to, is it also something that needs to get checked? Yung uh, foreign body sa cornea ay kailangan makita within 24 hours. Okay. Uh, kasi pwede yan maging sanhi ng mas malaking problema. Pwede magkaroon ng infection pag may foreign body sa okay. cornea. No? Mm -hmm. Usually, uh, sabi ko nga kanina, pwede yan dahil sa nagka-grind, no? o minsan, uh, meron lang, ito, very common sa mga golfers, no? pag yung nasa sun trap sila, tapos uh -huh. nasa, no? ito hindi nila alam, mainit yung sun. Tapos pag hampas sila nung uh, golf ball, yung sun pumupunta sa mata nila, dahil mainit, lumulubog eh sa cornea. Uh, I've seen a lot of cases na gano'n. No? So, yan ang mga common causes. Uh, so, siguro, gano'n daw, parang ingat din pala for people that are athletes, sports, sportsmen na outdoors. Kasi sa pagsabi mga doc, sa golfer, hindi mo naman nila iisipin yun eh. Uh, hmm. So, siguro, it's important na kung mag-golf ka, may proper eyewear ka rin, whether it's shades or parang sports glasses just to protect your eyes a little bit. And then, Doc, siguro mo, you say it's also common, let's say, ang, ang, ang sport mo, track and field, kung saan it's a lot of grass, or um, dust, soil, or tennis. Kasi tumatakbo yung Doc ng back and forth. So they're probably more common. Yes, it, it can happen in any sporting event, no? lalo na kung uh, outdoor uh, sports. And then, siguro ngayon, uh, more relevant for the people naman that are under quarantine. Bihira naman kasi silang lumabas. Pero, nataon na yung panahon natin is init lamig. 
mainit na mainit, tapos ang biglang bubuhos yung ulan. So in those cases, to, kunyari kapag mainit, minsan paglabas mo, napapansin mo, parang dusty talaga yung paligid. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you say na mahalaga na magsuot sila ng some sort of eye protection kung maaari? Uh, yes, oo. Mas maganda magsuot ng sunglasses, lalo na pag nasa labas, mainit, or na-expose sa alikabok, no? Uh, and kung halimbawa may suspecha sila na nalagyan ng foreign body yung mata nila, the best way to remove it is wag hipan. <laughs> Minsan, di ba, nakikita natin, hinihipan yung mata ng, ng, ng kaibigan o ng magulang. The best is to rinse it out with with uh, clean water. No? Kung meron kayong bottled water, i- dahan-dahan yung ibo sa mata. No? Kung meron kayong access sa... Uh, so faucet just switch turn on the faucet and just soak your eyes underneath the faucet uh, without rubbing your eyes of course and usually that will take care of the foreign body ah okay so yun again for the people na lang ako kapag ikaw yung quarantine designated person most of the time sila lang naman yung lumalabas eh it just so happens na kahit na nabawasan yung mga taong na encounter mo yung environment pa rin natin yung weather natin sa Pilipinas medyo ano eh medyo dusty so it's either dusty tsaka mainit or gantong umuulan pero at least lumalamig ng konti so at least may difference tayo how about ito doc so for a lot of people na ang naging bagong hobby nila during quarantine is to learn how to cook or to learn how to bake paano kung matasikan ako ng oil on my face or on my eyes would this be uh, a cause for concern? Is this something counted as an emergency? Yes. Uh, Parehas din yung approach, no? Uh, kung may, kapag nagluluto at may tumalsik na flour or or uh, mantika, uh-huh. uh, buksan niyo pa yung faucet ninyo, no? Let the water run and then put your face under the faucet and then just let the water flow sa mata niya para matanggal kung ano man yung pumunta sa inyong mata. And then you have to take time, no? Siguro, but even as much as 5 to 10 minutes, just let the water run eh, on your eyes. Kung masakit pa rin, o namumula, o lumabo yung vision, then that's the time to to see an eye doctor. Okay. Okay. And then, Doc, how about for the people na sa bahay? Like, I remember we were talking earlier na yung nagiging common na activity ng mga taong during this quarantine, during the lockdown, is yung lilinisin mo yung buong bahay. Lahat ng kwarto na minsan hindi mo na binubuksan. Na, nagkaroon ka ng para, panahon para mag-check. So ano yung gagawin mo? Let's say, nag, nag, lilinis ako with bleach. What if natalstikan ako? Uh, would this count as a chemical injury? Yes, uh, yung bleaches or any detergent for that matter. Even alcohol, di ba? Okay gamit tayo ng gamit ng alcohol ngayon. Pero there are instances na yung alcohol minsan uh, umupunta sa mata. Ganun din ang approach sa treatment, which is to flush it out with water. Don't rub your eyes. no. Uh, uh, you can hold your eyelids open habang pinaflush yung tubig. Okay. Yun ang, yun ang pinakamaganda. And then observe. Kung suma- mas lalong sumasakit, then kailangan makita sila kagad. Of course, for other more seri- more serious chemicals, no, na pumunta sa mata, kailangan makita sila, madalas sila ka- kagad sa hospital, katulad ng marami ngayon nag- nag-aayos ng kotse, di ba? Kasi maraming time. Yung ati doon sa battery, common yun, no? So, kailangan talaga mag-ingat to. Would you yes. say that na kung meron silang access siguro doon sa mga clear na goggles, baka pwedeng mas mabuti pa na habang naglilinis or habang siguro nagkukumpuni nga ng engine ng kotse, mas maganda mong suot na rin na lang nila yon Yes, uh, hindi lang sa virus effective yon Pati sa sa mga chemicals or sa mga foreign body, lalo na pag may ginagawa tayong mga bagay-bagay na we don't usually do on a regular basis, di ba? Nakakaroon ng aksidente dahil hindi tayo sanay. Uh, we're trying to learn how to bake, how to cook and doon nakakaroon ng mga aksidente. Okay. So, wearing the goggles would help a lot. Actually, Doc, I remember kasi meron rin akong kaibigan. Siguro, siya yung, ano, siya yung quarantine designated person to go through the grocery. Tapos sinabi niya, dahil takot na takot siya, doon yung may nahawakan siya, or let's say, uh, something that could be merong virus. May one time, nahawakan niya yung mukha niya, yung mata niya, 
nagpanik siya na sobra, took a, a spritzer, tapos naspraya niya ng alcohol yung face niya. So, uh, mm-hmm. at the end, syempre masakit, mahapdi yun eh. Uh, would a quick spritz be kind of okay? Basta hindi lang yung maraming maraming alcohol yung malagay sa mata. Ah, uh, hindi. <laughs> uh, kung may suspensya kayo na, halimbawa, nahawakan nyo yung mata nyo dahil yes. sa you're afraid of the virus, no? The best is to close your eyes and if you can uh, immediately go to the bathroom and just wash your hands and wash your face with your eyes closed, mm-hmm. mas, mas safe yon kaysa sa gumamit ng chemicals katulad ng okay. alcohol. I so, see. so avoid using alcohol near uh, mucous membranes, no? Kasama na dyan yung mata, yung ilong. Okay. At so, kung gano'n mo, if you are outdoors and you, again, you're afraid, mas maganda pa na meron ka ng wipes, yung wet wipes. Let's say, wala kang access, nakapila ka somewhere, you can yeah. leave. Uh, yeah. So, probably like you know, wipes, yeah. Oo, you can use that. Pero, uh, ingatan lang na nakapikit yung mata when you wipe your face with it, no? Okay. Alcohol, it's more for, you know, your hands or yung mga ahawakan mo, you can spray mm-hmm. alcohol. Mm-hmm. Or never spray on your face. Mm-hmm. Oh, would you say that for the people kasi that do groceries or they're the ones that receive yung mga packages from out, is it a good idea na, la, na may, nakasuot rin sila ng gloves? Ah... Uh, for the virus, yes, I think uh, it would be helpful kung naka-gloves tayo, no? O kahit nakahandle lang tayo ng mga groceries, no? Uh, tama yun. Uh, it's good to use gloves. And before ipasok yung mga gamit sa loob ng bahay, just make sure you use, you clean it very well with uh, Lysol spray or Lysol wipes. Ingatan lang syempre kung pagkain, di ba? Na malagyan ng chemicals. Pero generally, you have to clean the things that come from outside and into your house. Okay. And then, Doc, uh, I remember to say we, you also mentioned that some of the things that might be a cause for concern, yung, kunyari, na-distort yung vision ng pasyente. Uh, back, why is it considered na an urgent eye concern kapag may distortion? Pag nakakaroon kasi ng distorted vision, ang uh, medical term doon is metamorphopsia, no? Uh, ito ay pwedeng dahilan ng pamamaga sa macula. Yung macula, okay. ito yung sentro ng uh, retina. Ito yung pinakamahalagang bahagi ng retina. Ito ay pwede maging cause na dahilan sa, sa uh, macular degeneration. Pwede rin ito maging uh, symptomas halimbawa ng pagbabara ng ugat sa mata, yung tinatawag na vein occlusion. Pwede rin ito dahil sa diabetes, no? nagkakaroon ng macular edema. So, ang presentation yan ay distorted vision. Usually, yung mata hindi namumula, uh, hindi masakit yung mata, walang, walang uh, eye pain, okay. pero yung nakikita nila, distorted. Now, hindi lahat ng distorted vision ay sight-threatening or nakabubulag, no? Pero, hindi mo masabi yun, eh. So, importante makikita ka ng doctor right away. Para ma-assess yung condition mo. Kailangan i-dilate yung pupils, para makita at ma-examine yung macular area immediately. Doc, kapag sinabi mo ba na distortion, kasi like dito sa picture natin, parang yung image, mukha siyang blurred and at the same time, parang stretched. So when you say distortion, pwedeng sa edges lang ng thing na tinitingnan mo, pwedeng nasa gitna siya, or this the whole thing na tinitingnan mo, parang weird lang talaga yung shape, or you cannot identify na kung ano yung tinitingnan mo. Yung picture na nakikita nyo sa, sa slide, no? yan ay isang distorted, uh, isang isang picture ng isang pasyente nakakakita ng distortion. Makikita mo yung katawan at na, at ulo ng tao ay hindi pantay, no? parang mm-hmm. naging uh, uh, hindi natural yung paningin. Pero kapag ang pinakamabuti sa mga ganitong symptoms ay tumingin kayo sa kung nasa bahay kayo, tumingin kayo sa isang bagay na alam niyong diretso. Halimbawa, yung blind sa likod ko, no? You can see na horizontal yung blinds. Cover mo yung mata. Tingnan mo kung yung blinds ay wavy or crooked or kung may gaps. Kung meron, then yan ang isang mas 
significant uh, symptom na talagang kailangan kang makita ng isang doktor. Okay. Yun, okay. That's, that's useful information kasi nga kapag sinabi nilang distorted, means na iisipin ng tao, ah, parang blurry. Pero actually yeah. hindi. Blurry kasi yeah. parang fuzzy ka lang na konti. But distortion is the shape changes. Mm. Alam mo yung distorted vision, minsan uh, baliktad lang yung contact lens, pwede maging distorted vision. O mag-iba lang yung position ng eyeglasses ng mga pasyente may astigmatism, halimbawa, pwede rin magkaroon ng distorted vision. Pero yung mga, o, uh, kaya ang pinakamagandang paraan kung nasa bahay lang kayo is to look at something that is, your sure is, is straight. straight. Like, a, like a horizontal blinds or poste, mm -hmm. you know? or a door jam na alam mong diretso at kung tabingi siya then alam mong kailangan ka makita talaga okay and then doc siguro another thing that would signal sa mga pasyente na kapag naramdaman nila is siguro it's something that is a cause for concern ako nyari sinabi nila parang yung mata ko merong discharge yung parang yun yung sabi niya doc nagmumuta siya at hindi nila ma-explain kung bakit kailan usually nangyayaring na doc Ah, uh, ganun din eh. Yung discharge, maaaring uh, simple lang. Ito, kadalasan ko nakikita, sinasabi nila, Dok, nagmumuta yung mata ko. Ang una kong tanong ay, araw-araw uh, ba yan? Ang sasagutin nila, oo, araw-araw yan eh. Anong time during the day? Ah, pagkagising ko sa umaga. That's very common, di ba? So, kadalasan kung ganun ang symptoms, kadalasan dyan, nagda-dry lang yung mata eh. Siguro, mm. ano na ngayon, uh, na bibilad tayo sa electric fan no? or sa air conditioner dahil mainit, nagiging dry masyado yung mata natin uh, while asleep. So, nagkakaroon ng muta pagkagising sa umaga. But of course, may mga sitwasyon na pwedeng ang discharge ay dahil sa infection as you can see in the picture dyan. No? You can see na yung muta niya parang maputi mm -hmm. tapos uh, gumagapang doon sa eyelashes, no? No? at parang malapot masyado. Yung mga ganun, most probably dahil yan sa infection. And they okay. have to be seen right away and uh, binibigyan namin ng medication. Okay. Kapag yan, Dok, kasi yung sa itsura ng yung photo sa slide, parang mukha, yung sasabi niya, parang mukha siyang malapot at the same time, mukha siyang parang nagdikit na yung lashes together because yes. of the discharge. Kapag ganito, Dok, so let's say may anak ka, tapos nataon, paggising niya, napansin mo may ganitong situation, Ang dapat bang first thing gawin dito is that kailangan ma-wipe off yan so they have to wash their face to try to get some of that out. Mm, alam mo sa bata, pag nakakakita sila, nakaka-experience sila ng ganitong infection, kamot yan ang kamot eh. No? Uh, Pinapahid niya, pin pinupunasan nila yung kanilang mata kasi malabo yung vision kapag ganito karami yung uh, yung muta. No? Uh, ang mas maganda talaga is yung magulang, kailangan niyang kumuha siya ng tissue or cotton buds and to try to wipe out yung muta. Pero kailangan ba sa nila yung cotton, cotton swab or cotton buds para hindi masugatan yung eyelid o yung cornea ng bata. And then dali nila kaagad sa doktor. Okay. And then doc, siguro sa panahon ngayon, like, siguro if for any parent, uh, usually yung nagawin nila, pipicturean muna nila, tapos tatawag sila doon sa doktor, si send nila yung picture. So you would say na, for any doctor, let's say, na they want to consult, they want to use telemedicine function, it's better that they take that picture. Yes, sending a photo, lalo na ngayon with the technology that we have, no? you can always send a picture and right away, matutulungan ka ng doktor eh, no? na kung ano dapat gawin. And uh, Ish and I can help you with that. Okay. And then, Doc, I'm sure na a lot of patients, yung part of yung concern nila during quarantine is that medyo mahirap pumunta to any regular shop to get their uh, glasses or contact lenses. Uh, is it possible, like for example, for them to call up Asian Eye to get some of these things? Uh, well, uh, kung salamin kasi or contact lenses, kailangan masukatan sila muna, no? Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, hindi talaga natin sila mabibigyan ng prescription. Ngayon, kung meron na silang prescription na hindi naman uh, luma, then they can just send it over to us and we can help them with the uh, eyeglasses and contact lenses. 
Okay. So yun, siguro that's very useful para na sa mga pasyente natin. Kasi alam naman nila, alam na ngayon, mayroon naman silang record na we can mm-hmm. uh, review. And then kung kilalang nila ng replacement, walang problema eh. Yung mga pagpadala tayo ng mga replacement glasses or like a replacement pair of contact lenses. And at least hindi na sila lumabas ng bahay. Uh, safe at home sila. Uh, parang tawag lang naman ang kailangan sa Asian Eye. And then ma-arrange natin yung pag-deliver ng items na kailangan nila. Yes, there are also some of our uh, old patients. No? Matagal na natin pasyente sa Asian Eye. And uh, alam na namin yung mga, we can review yung inyong mga maintenance medications. And kung nahihirapan kayo to secure them, we can also help you get the medications. Okay. And then, Doc, uh, for these, ca- these cases naman kasi that we've been discussing, how do we, like, from the point of view of the doctor, how do we do it? How do we, how does a patient get in touch with you to consult about a specific eye concern? Uh, the best is to call our numbers, no? Uh, and then you can, of course, tell them kung ano yung symptoms and kung ito ay dahil, uh, kung ito ay talaga emergency, they can get in touch with uh, any of the doctors in Asian Eye Institute, no? Uh, if they feel it's a retina problem, uh, we have a retina team and uh, they can refer you to any of the other retina doctors. Okay, and it's siguro useful rin naman uh, for our patients or the or, or the patients that want to get con- get a consultation this coming week is that we are opening um, our clinics on a limited basis. So kung sakaling nagpo-put off kasi kayo nung check-up, pero nararamdaman nyo na parang kailangan na nga talaga mapat-check in particular condition na to. Lalo na siguro kung retina patient ka, meaning you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or any of these other conditions that generally on a normal basis you would typically come to see your doctor ng madalas um it now is a good time na pwede naman sila tumawag pwede na pa schedule yun yes. lang upside no doc na at least medyo yes. nakakaroon na ng changes doon sa quarantine specifications yes uh well uh ito opinion ko lang no uh hindi naman ibig sabihin pagdating ng march ng, ng June 1, kapag na-lift na yung ECQ, ay immediately back to normal na tayo. So, yung, yung virus is here to stay. We have to accept that, no? Hanggang sa may lumabas na vaccine. Mm-hmm. Pero, dapat matuto tayo to live with the virus. We have to learn to work with the virus. And, uh, sa institute, kung kayo ay natatakot na baka kayo mahawa, uh, meron kaming mga paraan para sa ganun, malesen yung chance na ma-expose kayo sa virus o sa mga pasyente may virus no merong uh if pwede naman if you call the number uh, may mga screening procedures tayo uh, yung mga doctors and staff naka protective gear no you can talk na PPE para maiwasan na um, ang pagkonsulta niyo sa institute ay mas makasama pa sa inyo so don't worry if you feel you have to see an eye doctor then you have to see an eye doctor with, of course, with precautions, no? Taking okay. emergency to consideration. Oh, sige, siguro uh, to give yung viewers natin a better idea, like flash kasi tayo dito na photo of what it looks like now if you were to come to the clinic. So makikita nyo na syempre kapag yung face-to-face consultation, usually, di ba, ipapatang mo yung mukha mo dun sa, dun sa machine para makita ng mas malapitan ng doktor kung ano yung condition ng mata. So, syempre, doon sa case na yun, sigurado face-to-face kayo ng doktor. So, meron konting fear na baka hala, baka mataon, na mahawaan ako. So, ang ginawa kasi natin dito is at naglagay na tayo, na tayo ng droplet shield. So, merong additional barrier between you at saka yung doktor or nurse that is checking you. So, that let's say, kahit na nag-uusap kayo, merong shield doon that is in place. At the same time, syempre kapag bibisita kayo, uh, i-encourage namin dapat naka-face mask talaga basta lumabas ng bahay, lalang-lalo na kung pupunta ka sa medical facility. So yung kausap mong nurse, yung kausap mong receptionist, yung kausap mong doctors, lahat sila naka-different levels of yung protective gear depending dun sa gano'ng kal- kal- kamalapit sila sa inyo eh. So siguro as a way na mabawasan rin yung takot ng mga tao magpa-check up, 
is that at least alam mo, nakapagpumunta ka sa clinic, huwag ka lang magulat na yung mga kausap mo ay naka-full uh, protective gear in some cases or in partial depending on yung distance mo sa kanila. So let's see, baka yung uh, receptionist namin, meron siyang face shield plus yung mask, and then you move on, you, you meet the optometrist, yun, mas kompleto, pati yung uh, covered, pati yung clothes nila. And of course, pag minsan, even their hair, they have the mask, and they have the face shield on top of that. So yun, there are a lot of things that we're doing. And siguro, Doc, uh, you've also been doing surgeries, no, Doc, during the quarantine? Yes, emergency surgeries. Uh, we, have, we have been doing uh, during the during the lockdown. Mm -mm. So, siguro, if you also take a look at yung image dun of the, there's a surgery image dun kasi, you look at them, medyo interesting siyang tingnan kasi it looks like astronauts doing surgery, the way it looks. Pero in fact, uh, the doctor, syempre, are, are on full PPE to make sure that if you need surgery, kompleto yung ano, protection not only for the doctor, but also for the patients. So, during that whole time that happens in a sterile environment, we have everyone is equipped with enough gloves, with enough um, surgical gowns, and even yung an additional cover on top. So, ito, Doc, tama ba, Doc, yung understanding? Kung nakapag nakasuot kayo ng ganong kompleto, medyo mainit talaga yung PPE. Yes, uh, makapal kasi yung, yung, at saka layered yung PPE, eh, no? So, we, we wear a mask, and then merong face shield, tapos minsan may kasama pang goggles or or eye glasses no nakaguantes sa OR naka double gloves kami so talagang medyo uh, mainit pero we have to as i said you have to live and work with this virus eh di ba hindi okay. naman ito mawawala in several months but we need we still need to undergo eye procedures we still have to consult our eye doctors di ba so okay. uh, on the side of the patients naman we want you to be very honest with your uh, uh, medical history, no? Uh, before you come in for a checkup, we check your temperatures. I hope you don't mind when if we do that. We uh, ask you a lot about your medical history, no? Kung may exposure sa virus. So all of that is, is taken into consideration. Pero ang pinakagusto namin sana sa mga pasyente is to be honest doon sa kanilang pagsasagot ng questions para maiwasan din yung pag-spread ng virus. So, siguro when it comes to uh, patients, let's say, nagpapakonsult sila, would you say na the combination of having your mask and at the same time a face shield is important for a patient na magpapakonsult at this time? Yes. Uh, yung mga pasyente pumupunta sa amin na halimbawa kulang sa protection on their side. No? Pwede namin bigyan sila ng mask or even goggles. Uh, pero importante pa rin yung social distancing, no? And uh, kung pwede sila magdala ng isang kasama lang imbis na yung buong barangay, no, makakatulong din yon kasi we're trying to uh, limit the number of people coming into the center. And then frequent hand washing no, is important. And I think there are also plans to have a dedicated uh, elevator para lang sa Asian Eye Institute. That will help a lot in preventing the uh, spread of the virus to okay. our guests and our, and our staff. Mm. And I think, siguro to, it's important nga na to remind patients na eh, kung magpapa check up ka ngayon, na wag nga masyadong marami kang kasama kapag pumunta sa clinic. Kasi syempre, higit sa dapat limitado pa rin yung paggalaw ng tao, at the same time, minimaintain kasi natin na konti lang talaga yung mga tao sa clinic. So, mami-minimize yung chance na magkabanggaan kayo or magkatabi. So, even sa waiting room natin, siguro for me, interesting siyang tingnan minsan kasi parang, uh, parang, parang sila naglalaro ng musical chairs. Kasi parang one seat apart yung pagkaupo ng mga pasyente. So, that means kahit na may companion ka, kung magtatabi kayo sa waiting area, hindi siya talagang magkatabi. Kasi may gap in between before the next chair. And at the yeah. same time, within the same hour, parang walo lang kayo within that clinic time. So, yes, and we encourage uh, our patients, no? yung mga old patients namin and uh, new patients to come, na uh, mag-appointment kayo. You call in for an appointment para hindi rin masyadong matagal ang hintay 
sa clinic kasi the longer you're exposed to other people the greater the chance diba na pwede kayong ma uh, uh, expose sa virus okay so it's call it and set an appointment okay so yun it's very important guys dati kasi pwede tayong mag walk in but hangga't maaari because we are limiting exposure give us a call at least you'll know exactly the day and time na available yung doctor mo and then you know that we are limiting the number of people and if we know to expect you Siyempre, mas handa kami sa pagdating versus yung larating na ng bigla. Siyempre, mag-hesitate even yung, uh, even the building where the clinic would be in. Siyempre, they're trying to minimize the movement of people within the building. So at the same time, siguro, important rin na malaman ng mga pasyente na kanyari pagpasok mo sa clinic. Napakarami kasi ng mga sanitizers natin that are available. So let's say may nahawakan kang surface, nagsulat ka within uh, sa patient data sheets, things like that. Kung may konti kang takot, just because you held a pen or you touched paper, at least alam mo na halos lahat ng corners meron tayong alcohol, meron tayong sanitizer. And at the same time, nakapag umupo ka sa harap ng isang machine, alam mong you will undergo some sort of procedure. All of those, makikita mong sinasanitize bagong mo pa siya gamitin. So kung meron kang takot, at least you know, you'll, you'll see them, eh. you'll watch them, and you'll see them that they are sanitizing right before they use it on you. And then, syempre, as soon as you get up, and as soon as you leave that particular consultation room, siguro daw, sinasanitize din yung kwarto. Para yes. naman ito. Yeah, the institute is taking all the necessary precautions. Sobra-sobra pa nga eh. Uh, doon sa mga uh, recommended ng, uh, ng, ng, ng mga ng ibang health officials sa atin, no? Uh, so, you know, Come in, uh, set an appointment. Uh, we'll try our best to make sure that your visit will be uh, comfortable and safe. Okay. And then you were saying, nga, Doc, na since medyo mag-start na mag-open up some of these other facilities, like healthcare facilities, syempre that means na uh, if you have a pending uh, scheduled, let's say, so kailangan mo pa-cataract surgery or kailangan mo some of these, maybe glaucoma surgery, some sort of retina surgery. At this time, at least pwede na siyang ma-schedule uh, in spite of the quarantine period. Is there any other additional na safeguards, Doc, that are in place to help patients feel safe if they have to undergo surgery? Uh, well, uh, importante talaga yung yung ano eh, yung honor system dito no kasi halimbawa ang isang pasyente ay meron pala silang medical problems na hindi nila binabanggit or meron silang mga kamag-anak na nagkaroon pala ng infection ng covid di ba and they are considered medyo high risk sana they'll just be uh, honest with us no now yung yung surgery for the next two weeks until malift yung uh, modified ECQ, uh, medyo limited pa rin, but in certain instances, we can perform uh, yung mga urgent cases. No? It really needs to be addressed. Okay. So again, mahalaga na makapagpa-appointment muna sila para ma-assess ng doctor kung ano yung condition. Kasi kung surgery siya na pwedeng i-defer, syempre i-defer mo, ilipat mo muna sa ibang araw, medyo later siguro in the next couple of months, versus a more urgent case, usually, again, Doc, yung sinasabi niyo mga retina cases, kailangan kasi ma-address agad. So kapag nakikita kasi ng doctor na gano'n yung kaso ninyo, uunahin kayo. Ipaprioritize kayo kasi alam nila na mas mahalagang magawa yung surgery mo ngayon para ma-preserve yung vision mo. And then, Doc, yeah. actually, from a lot of our patients that are our viewers today, there are a lot of questions. So I'm gonna go to some of them now. So ito, first question, uh, what is Visual snow. Hmm. Okay. Visual snow, dog. Is there such a... <laughs> Ngayon ko pa lang narinig yung term na yun. Yes. Uh, I don't know what uh, by, by visual snow. Uh, parang nag... Kung... Kung, kung, kung ang ibig sabihin niyang glare o parang nasisilaw, uh -uh. Uh, minsan yan ay dahil sa humiidad na, baka katarak yan eh. Uh -oh. Ah, so pwede palang simple. Oo, baka nagda-dry lang yung mata. 
Um, but mm, I think he has to be more specific sa kanyang uh, description. Uh, oh, kasi dun sa, uh, sa pagkaka-describe ng visuals, Snow, parang iniisip ko, posibleng ang floaters din yun do. Kasi parang bumabagsak eh, yung image. Sabi ko, ah, posibleng floaters pala. Pero again, siguro, sir, si Mr. Dan Razib Pamisa, mas mabuti, sir, na tumawag tayo do sa, sa uh, telemedicine service para at least mas masabi niyo kung ano yung other symptoms. Kasi yung uh, ganito, baka medyo malabo pa, kailangan natin malaman from the doctor. And ito, ito doc, next question. Paano po ko ang redness ng eye ay dun mismo sa gilid ng black part ng eye? Okay. Uh, kung itong redness ay nasa, nasa, nasa may cornea, I think yung, yung, yung black part that he's saying, he's referring to the uh, Kung yung red yan ay nasa isang lugar lang, yan ay malamang dahil sa subconjunctival hemorrhage. Okay. Pero kung kita natin halimbawa yung redness, paikot doon sa black or sa cornea, or yung buong puti ay may, ay namumula, baka yan ay sign of infection or yung inflammation. So okay. depende kung, kung, uh, kung ano yung distribution ng eye redness. Okay, kung ganon from Miss Marielle Villarta, mabuti po na picture niyo po siguro yung itsura ng mata niyo, mas idaan natin yan doon sa telemedicine service para at least makita ng doctor, mas masabi niya kung anong next steps na dapat gawin. Yes. And the next question is from John Marka Asi. Paano po yung nag-blurred ang paningin pag nag-work using computer and cellphone? Uh, ang common reason dyan is baka fat, ay fatigue, no? Mm -hmm. Now, nakikita ko yung picture niya na naka-motorcyclo. Uh, he looks uh, probably middle age, no? So, baka yan ay press biopia or yung nawawala na yung ability ng mata natin na mag-focus. That usually happens at the age of 40. And uh, uh, baka kailangan lang niya ma-refract kung masukatan ng grado at mabigyan ng tamang salamin. Lalo na sa computer at sa cellphone. Okay. So siguro nga, Dok, medyo marami kasi yung combination nung ginagawa niya sa bahay or sa buhay niya. Kasi syempre yun, nagsabi niya, Dok, nagmumotor siya. At the same hmm. time, sa computer siya ka nagsiselfon. So magpaiba kasi yung gusto sa Dok, di ba? Meron yung far distance, tapos meron yung nagko-computer, so parang yun yung intermediate. Tapos nagsiselfon, yun yung near. So kailangan, yes. sir, mukhang kailangan mapacheck up kayo kung kailangan nyo ng no, salamin o kung sakali, baka maiba tayong condition na kailangan mapacheck up. Yeah, huwag siya matakot. Mukhang ano lang yan, uh, kailangan lang niya magpalit na salamin o kailangan niya ng reading, reading classes. Okay. And then ito doc, next question from Jevelyn Nunyal. Nakakaranas din po ako na may nakikita akong light, flashes of light sa gilid ng mata ko. Is this condition for emergency na po? Kung ito ay very recent at... Uh, dumadami yung flashes of light, nagiging mas madalas, at may ibang symptoms katulad ng floaters, yung nabanggit mo kanina, Audrey. Then maganda makita siya kaagad ng isang uh, retina specialist. Okay. So yun. Yun, uh, ma'am. Ito po na ito, medyo hindi niya pwedeng kuna ng picture, no? katulad ng eye redness. Mm -hmm. She has to come in uh, for, a, for a consult. Okay. And then ito naman, Doc, next question is ano po ang epekto sa mata kung more than two times na nag-red or dumugo yung part ng mata malapit sa nose dahil sa galit? Uh, ito yung baka ano ito eh, subconjunctival hemorrhage din ulit eh, no? Pag nagagalit tayo, tumataas ang ating blood pressure, no? Uh, mm -hmm. Nag-rupture yung blood vessel, lalo na kapag uh, may edad na tayo o may iniinom tayong mga gamot na nakakalab na ng dugo, usually ito yung nangyayari. Again, kung wala namang ibang symptoms, uh, don't worry too much. No? Uh, pwede nyo rin lagyan ng ice compress tulad ng sinabi ko kanina for the first 24 hours. Okay. And siguro uh, kapag ganito pala yung situation kapag nagagalit siya, siguro mabuti rin na mat matutunan niya how to manage yung pag labas ng galit para hindi siya sobra, baka rin very stressful yung naging experience ng pasyenteng to. It's a good mm -hmm. idea to 
either remove yourself na lang from the situation, magkumawa ka muna ng ibang bagay para hindi sobrang uminit yung ulo. Sumasabay po yata, Doc, if it's hot weather, you, you, people can become hot-tempered. Yes. Iba rin kung madalas nangyayari ito versus kung once lang nangyari. Kung once lang nangyari or very seldom na mangyari, there's no reason to worry. Pero kung maya at maya, paulit-ulit ito, kailangan silang ma-check. Ayun. Ayan. So that's a good tip. And then ito naman, Doc, um, Ricky Lapitan is asking, Sa retinal detachment surgery po na may pinky lens, kailangan po ba tanggalin yung lens pag nag-undergo ng surgery? Uh, yes and no. Depende kasi yan sa lala ng retinal detachment. Uh, minsan, kung talagang malala yung detachment, tinatanggal namin yung lens. O kung minsan, kapag may katarata na o nagiging cloudy yung lens or nawawala yung o nahihirapan kami sa na ma-visualize yung retina, pinatanggal namin yung 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 natural lens. Ah, so depende na lang. Surgery, yes. Ah, But it, 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 Again, Doc, sorry. Uh, hindi routine na tinatanggal yung uh, natural lens natin when we do retina de retinal detachment surgery. Mm, okay. So it really depends on the particular case ng pasyente, kung kailangan lang talaga. Kung kailangan lang talaga, yes. Okay. Ito, mm -hmm. here's another follow-up question naman. If a person is nearsighted, is there any chance of developing floaters? I have eye floaters and it's been four months since I noticed. At hindi naman dumami. I can only notice when I'm in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Do I need to worry? Yung floaters, mas nakikita yan kapag maliwanag. Kaya yung sinasabi niyang pag nasa labas siya, outdoors, mas nakikita niyo yung floaters, is, is normal, no? Kapag nasa loob ka ng bahay at madilim, kahit nandyan yung floaters, hindi mo napapansin. Now, nearsighted siya, kung ang grado niya ay greater than 400 halimbawa, which makes him high risk mm -hmm. no uh, or high ma or he, he, he will be considered a high myo uh, may mataas na chance na itong floater na ito ay dahil sa retina problem so kailangan siyang makita kaagad pero sabi niya kanina four months na niyang napapansin ito at kung hindi naman uh, dumadami yung floaters at wala namang ibang symptoms na kasabay nitong floaters uh, hindi naman Malamang hindi siya ganun kadelikado. But I would still advise him to see a retina specialist for a, for a good checkup. Okay. And then here, Doc, there's another question naman na ano po kaya ang pro problema kapag sa tuwing mag-uubo ay merong flashes of light sa gilid ng paningin? Uh, kaya kasi may flashes of light kasi yung retina natin ay nasi-stimulate mm -hmm. uh, na na halimbawa kung uh, irarab mo yung mata mo ng matindi, di ba nakakakita tayo ng ilaw? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Kaya nakakakita ng ilaw kasi yung retina natin ay na-stimulate physically. So, ganun din pag uh, nag-sneeze sila at usually merong movement ng ulo, no? Mm -hmm. And sudden movement ng ulo will cause the vitreous, yung tubig sa loob ng mata, to move, and it can pull the retina. And that can lead to uh, to seeing light flashes. So again, normal yon kung talagang matindi yung pagsinga ng pasyente o pag-ubo. No? Okay, okay. So yun, so, siguro dahil umubo siya, parang natakot siya kasi basta sinabing flashes of light, uh, inaakala nga na very serious. Pero again, sabi nga nito, uh, hindi siya necessarily a bad thing. Pwede, rin, pwede lang na physically nasistimulate yung retina mo. Okay. That's it. Alam na kung may, kung may konting edad na yung pasyente, no? Mm. So yung, yung vitreous ng isang pasyente uh, hindi na masyadong bata, nas, mas nagiging liquid na siya. So mas, ma, mas maraming movement sa vitreous that can cause traction on the retina. Or pulling. Uh, okay. okay. So it's more likely na mangyari sa'yo yun basta't mas uh, 
mas advanced ka in age kung mas may edad na po ang pasyente. Yes. Okay. And then, ito naman do, uh, may question dito. Meron po bang age limit for eye LASIK? Uh, merong ideal age for LASIK. Uh, sa insi I don't do LASIK, no? Pero ang... Um, um, Sa institute, meron kaming uh, age range that we consider as the ideal age ng LASIK, which is from age 20 to 21 hanggang 40. So, yun ang ideal age. Kung, kung greater than 40, case to case na yan is para sa amin. Okay. So, siguro para sa pasyente na to, ang mahalaga kasing mapagawa is yung makapag-palasic screening ka. Kasi yun yung best way para malaman kung yung condition po ng mata mo, yung grado mo, yung overall health ng mata, uh, means na appropriate ka pa rin for LASIK surgery or possibly kasi yung baka hindi LASIK surgery, pwede palang uh, ICL or baka over 40, kailangan super corning options sa inyo. So meron namang different options para sa mga pasyente, depende sa age nila at depende sa condition ng mata. So, siguro the best thing kapag medyo uh, nag-normalize na kasi yung operations natin at saka pwede na talaga magpa-check up regularly for mga concerns na hindi naman urgent, magpa-LASIK screening po tayo kasi ito yung best way para malaman kung pwede kayo for LASIK surgery. Hindi lang kasi yung age. It can be yung medical condition, it can be yung kanyang uh, uh, grado, kung masyadong mataas, kung masyadong mababa. Iyan ang mga considerations na makikita lang natin once we do the basic screening. Okay. Doc, kasi ikaw, in your case, you're a retina doctor. So, syempre, di ba, check rin po ang retina bago magpa-LASIK. So, paano yung mga pasyente, let's say, na merong other health concerns? Let's say, diabetic din sila. Would you say na pasyente ganon actually pwede, can undergo LASIK screening to see if they can do LASIK surgery? Ah... Uh... Para sa akin, kung ang diabetes ay well-controlled no, and they pass yung LASIK screening, then it is a consideration. Pero kung hindi controlled yung kanilang blood sugar, uh, I would rather that they uh, defer yung, yung uh, LASIK surgery. Okay. Kasi minsan, nagbabago yung grado uh, dahil sa blood sugar at hindi dahil sa refraction. Okay. Minsan din na nagkakaroon ng early cataract sa mga diabetics na uh, yung gagawin nilang LASIK procedure may not last very long. So case to case. Okay, so yun, again, for patients that are interested in conditions like this, and it so happens that they have uh, a condition like diabetes or high blood pressure, kailangan, one, minomonitor yung condition nyo, two, manage so that means kinokontrol niya blood sugar, kinokontrol niya rin yung blood pressure or any other medication na you might be taking. And at the same time, nagpapacheck kayo sa doctor. Kasi for situations like this, it's important that you check with your doctor first. And then again, if you go undergo the screening, very thorough naman yun. Medyo matagal lang po talaga ang screening procedures. Pero after that, masasabi sa yun ng doctor ng, uh, ng very clearly and and it will give you peace of mind na should you decide to do any other procedure, na safe yun para sa inyo. And then ito, Doc, there is one question here uh, from Janine Limbo. After doing physical activities, nakaka-experience po ako ng eye pressure and nagre-red yung eyes. Is it a sign of glaucoma? Uh, yes and no. Pero kung siya ay, kung nangyayari lang ito during physical activities, then... Uh, most probably, hindi naman, no? Uh, pag nag exercise tayo, yung blood pressure natin tumataas, no? At uh, napapawisan tayo. So, normal, normal lang talaga na yung mata natin namumula ng konti. Mm. Uh, no, it's not an absolute sign of glaucoma. Pero kung may family history siya ng glaucoma, then maganda magpa-check up siya. Okay. So again, siguro for this particular patient, depende po yan. Dun sa, again, the family history na binanggit ni Doc. At saka, how often nangyayaring redness and yung pag-increase ng no eye pressure. On the mm -hmm. upside, again, if it's something that's bothering you, medyo madalas na siyang consideration. And at the same time, alam nyo na sa pamilya nyo, uh, mataas yung likelihood na mag-develop kayo ng condition. Mag Mabuti na rin pong itawag siya para makapagpa-appointment. 
uh, and pwedeng glaucoma doctor kasi ang mag-address ng concern ninyo and they will tell you kung dapat pa magpa-check up na talaga. And then here, another question, Doc, naman, from Romeo Aure. Paano po kapag pumunta ang muta o mucus sa pupil? Mm, I think ang ibig niya sabihin dyan ay yung, mut, yung muta pumupunta over the cornea. Oo, uh, baka... Yung pupil kasi yun yung uh, na, nasa gitna eh. Uh, kung ganun, kung kumakalat yung muta over the cornea, that means talaga matindi yung muta na yun, no? Uh -uh. Na halos nalulunod na yung cornea sa muta. They have to be seen right away. Okay. Sige. Mm -hmm. So at, at least for this particular patient, depende po yan nga. Na mukhang, at least sa pagkakadescribe nyo, mukhang kailangan na magpa-check ha. So mas mabuti po na tumawag na sila dun sa numbers na naka-flash dito sa screen natin. Para at least... Yeah. Ma, ma, baka sakali makapagpadala rin kayo ng picture, mas ma-assess ng doctor kung ano yung dapat na susunod na gagawin. And in this case, yes, doctor, doctor pala siya pasyente. <laughs> so at least for this particular Mr. Romeo, uh, mabuti pong itawag. Uh, itawag ka na to try to schedule. Yung upside kasi is dahil nag-re-open nag, nag naman ang Asian eye for limited, uh, for limited hours it's a good time to try to schedule an appointment and to at least check with Dr. Veloso kung anong next steps natin. So, mabuti na rin na nag-send kayo ng question for us sa amin today. And then, Doc, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we were able to field a lot of questions, siguro, from some some who are your own patients and also sa mga ibang pasyente na confused sila sa ano ba talaga ibig sabihin ng urgent or emergency eye concerns. So ngayon, meron na tayong konting clarity kung ano ba talagang ibig sabihin kung immediate emergency siya, very urgent lang, or uh, urgent, uh, general urgent concern. So thank you yes. so much, Doc, for your time uh, for your time this afternoon. And uh, what days will you be available in Rockwell starting this coming week? Uh, starting the week of uh, May 18, uh, the, the clinic will be open, I think, from Tuesday to Thursday. I'll be in on Tuesday and Wednesday. So please feel free to call and set an appointment. You can see the numbers dito. Or if you have any questions, you can text it to the numbers or email it to us. Okay. So thank you so much today for, ta for taking the time out and for trying out this new Facebook Live sessions that we have for our patients. So we'll be seeing you siguro very soon, Doc, at the clinic. And for the patients who are interested in setting appointments, please give us a call. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Audrey, and thank you to all the viewers and listeners.